is what do you do when you get at that place in your life where you look at the circumstances, you look at what the results are, and you look around at your environment, and, and, and when you compare that to the thoughts that you have in your mind, when you compare that to the desires that are in your heart, when you compare that to what your expectations were, you realize that those two things are not in agreement. That's right. That, that right now, that maybe perhaps you thought that you'd be so much further than you are, or right now you thought that, that you would have the financial freedom and security you always wanted, that maybe right now you thought that you would have this healthy, happy marriage, or you thought that you would have accomplished your goals and your dreams. So what do you do when you've gotten to that place where you're frustrated, where, where you're, you're asking yourself, why bother? That you, you're, you're considering even possibly giving up, that, that you haven't maybe verbalized it, but internally you feel defeated. And so the question is, what do you do? And so I want to suggest something to you tonight, and I want you to write this down. When you get to that place, when you look at your environment, when you look at your circumstances, when you look at everything that you've produced, and you compare it to the desires that are in your heart, you compare it to these lofty dreams, you compare it to what it is that you wish and you hope that you are accomplishing, and you realize that those two things are not in agreement. You're not producing the results that you want. The environment is saying everything opposite to the desires that are in your heart, that your bank account, it's looking nothing like you want it to be. So what do you do in those circumstances? And here's what I say, that you've got to act as if, write that down, that you've got to act as if, as if what? You've got to act as if you are greater than your circumstances. You got to act as if that you have the ability that regardless of whatever's going on right now in your marriage, that you can restore this thing. You've got to act as if that even though right now you're under tremendous debt and you're trying to figure out how you're going to turn this situation around. You got to act as if you can make this thing happen, that you can get rid of all this debt. You've got to act as if even though you've been pursuing this goal and this dream and you've been going after this thing now for five years, possibly six years, and you're not seeing the results, you've got to act as if that this thing is going to happen yeah you got to act as if and so some of you might be saying what exactly does that mean what does it mean Andy maybe 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 you you don't understand my circumstances you don't understand what I'm going through right now you don't understand how I'm struggling in my marriage. You don't understand how I've been let go from my job. You don't understand how, you know, I've been diagnosed with something that I never thought I would be. You don't understand how I've been pursuing this goal and this dream. I've been working this business. I haven't produced the results. What do you mean act as if? And so I, I know this, this question is going on in your mind. And I, I had a, a a former student of mine that, that helped shed some light on, on what it means to act as if. And, and as, as many of you know, I have a, a, a monthly coaching program. And part of the monthly coaching program, I invite special guests and, and other people to come and, and share ideas and thoughts. And, and so this, this past week, we, we invited somebody, I invited somebody who was one of my, my former coaching students who took everything that I taught him real estate related, and he found a way to just literally have great, great success. I mean, has had phenomenal success all the way to the point that right now I could sit with him and probably learn a couple of things from him. And, and so we were having a conversation and he was reflecting at the place that he was right when he first approached me about coaching. And, and, and he said, Andy, he said, man, I don't know if you understand the extent of where I was, man. He said, you don't understand. I was at one point a very successful mortgage broker. I was doing very well, man. He said, it was not uncommon for me to have consecutive months in which I was clearing five figures a month. He said, I was, I was traveling. I was enjoying the better things in life. I could spend and blow the money because I knew that the following month that I would be able to get this money and I'd continue to make it. And he said, things were going great. And then the real estate market crashed. And he said that once the real estate market crashed, of course, my income, this five figure a month income, all of a sudden now it dwindled down to nothing. 
And now because of the stress of the finances, now because unfortunately my marriage wasn't strong enough to support this new added pressure, my wife filed for divorce and she left the house. And now that my wife left the house, I found myself in a situation that I don't know if you understand, Andy. I was in this situation where literally I was living in a place where oftentimes the lights and the electricity was getting cut off. And he said, there are times that I would go to Barnes and Noble and I would literally stay there just so I can be in the air condition, just so I could be someplace that had lights. And once they finally closed the doors at Barnes and Nobles, he said, I would get in my car and I would go home and there would be no electricity and find my way through the dark and go in and take a cold shower because the hot water heater wasn't working. And he said that that was the place I was in. I said, whoa. I said, man, Gustavo, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was to that extent. And then I asked him a question. I said, um, I said, Gustavo, what, what would you say was maybe the one of the lowest points when you were going through that process? And when you were going through that 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 circumstance, that 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 setback. And he said, he said, my wife and I were going through a divorce and we, we had two kids. And even though I was unemployed, I wasn't making any income, even though that there are many times that I was struggling just to try to keep the lights on, I wanted to be able to see at least one of my kids. And, and, and so a lot of times I couldn't get both of them, but I insisted on at least seeing my older daughter. And, and, and he said, you know, my, my ex-wife knew that I was struggling. And one of the things that she always did is every time I was going to pick up my daughter, there'd be a bag there with clothes for my daughter. And there'd always be a bag also with some food. And there was always enough food for me to eat and my daughter to eat. And he said, but one particular day, one particular day, I was picking up my daughter and I don't know what happened. My, my ex-wife, she must have been busy or whatever. And she didn't pack the lunch. And he said, man, I, I don't know what you if you can understand what this feels like. As a man. To have your little daughter with you. And have her in your presence. And know in your heart that, that, that you aren't even sure how you're going to feed her because you don't even have enough money to give her something to eat. And you had become dependent on her mom packing the lunch. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, well, Gustavo, let me ask you a question. Because Gustavo, I have witnessed what you've done over the past couple of years. I mean, you have taken this information, this real estate information. You have built a very lucrative, a very successful real estate business. You're back to traveling. You're back to making great, great income, many months over a five figure income again. And I said, knowing what you know right now, knowing what you know right now, right now, after having gone through that experience, I want to know right now if you could go back in time and speak to the Gustavo in the past, the one at the weakest moment, the one who couldn't afford to keep the lights on, the one who didn't know how he was going to feed his daughter, the one who was who was saying to himself that I don't know if I can ever recover from this. What would you say to him? And as I listened to him and I was listening to his response. In so many words, here's what he said. He said, I would have told that guy that he has to act as if. That he's got to act as if that he is greater than his circumstances. That he has to act as if that he realizes that, that his circumstances do not define him. That he's got to act as if he's already that businessman, that innovator, that father that he knows that he can be. And he needs to act from that place. He needs to embody that. His posture needs to change. His mindset needs to change regardless of what the environment is, regardless of what his bank account is telling him that he's got to act of this. And so here's what I say to you. That right now you might be looking at your circumstances. Right now you, you, you might be looking at your life and and. and you're saying to yourself that, 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 that the results that I've produced, my, my environment right now, my, my relationships, my, my bank account, my business is not in agreement. It's not in alignment 
with the desires of my heart. It's not in alignment with what I know within myself I can produce. I know this, man. You don't understand. My bank account is saying just a few couple of dollars, but in my mind, in my mind, I know that I can have a very successful, financially free life, that my relationship, it's saying struggle all over it. There's no conversation. There's tension. But in my mind, I know that we can make this thing work. So what do I do in that place? You act as if you act as if you can overcome this thing that you're facing right now. You act as if that, that, that you can be this person that you know that you can be. You act and you, you, you live from that place. Your posture is from that place. When you walk into a room, regardless of what your bank account says, regardless of what's going on in your mind, you walk in that room, you act as if this thing that you have, this thing that you desire, that it's already happened. And so I, I, I know that that's not always easy. I, I know that, that that's one of those things that it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, Andy. I, I know you're saying that because you're, you're looking at, at the circumstances. You're looking at the struggle. You're looking at the things that you have to deal with and you're saying that, that maybe you, you don't understand. It's, it's hard to act as if when, when you don't even know how you're going to keep the lights on. It's hard to act as if when you're in your own home and you feel like a stranger. It's hard to act as if. But it's the only way that you can turn this situation around because acting as if it doesn't change the circumstances right away. Acting as if it doesn't change the environment, but what it changes is the way that you show up. What it changes is the way that others perceive you. What it changes is the way that you have your outlook, the way that you view your circumstances and understand that you understand at that point. Now, these circumstances, they don't define me. I define them. And so I'm speaking and I'm thinking from this new place. And instead of focusing on the circumstances, I'm focusing on where I'm going. Instead of focusing what I've lost, I'm focusing what I'm looking to gain. Instead of focusing on all the struggle, I'm focusing on what the opportunity is because I'm acting as if. And so I think about a young lady that, that I met some years ago. Her name is, is Pauline Ahi. And Pauline was born with no arms and no legs. And the first time I met Pauline, I was in Las Vegas or California. And we were at a speaker training event. And first of all, I was blown away when I found out that Pauline, who was there and she was sitting on this, this wheelchair and she was operating the wheelchair with with just literally a, a, a little nub that 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 protrudes from the bottom of her body. And I was blown away just by her mere presence and to, to know that she traveled all the way from Hawaii to come to this thing. And I'm wondering how in the world that this woman travel all by herself. She has no arms and she has no legs. And so as we're going through the, this, this, this speaker training event through the weekend, and of course, everyone there is, is looking at Pauline and her disabilities are, are just so present. And, 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 and what's, what's amazing is, and, and I have to say this because what, what blows me away is in contrast that there, there are some people who have no disability, some people who have their arms, their legs, and, and they have a, a, a perfectly good mind, but, but because of the fact that they have a limited mindset, because of the fact that they've been acting as if the world is against them, they've been acting as if they can't get past their past circumstances, they've been acting as if it's the economy's fault, they've been acting as if all the things are stacked against them, it's almost as if they have a disability. But yet you can get in the presence of someone like a Pauline Ahi, who has a very visible disability, who has no arms, who has no legs, and as we're sitting there in the room and they're going around and they're asking questions and there's a point where Pauline was being interviewed in front of everybody that was there in the room. 
And in the interview, there was a very sincere question from the person who was interviewing Pauline, looking at Pauline, the fact that she has no arms and no legs, understanding that life must be so difficult for her. She looked at Pauline and here's what she said. She said, Pauline, what would you say? What would you say, Pauline, is one of your biggest challenges? And and all of us looked at Pauline and we're all thinking in our mind, the obvious, I mean, she has no arms and no legs. Her biggest challenges have to be opening the door, going to the restroom, someone has to help her. All, all the regular things that we take for granted, those have to be her biggest challenges. And Pauline's looking. And if you were in the room, you would see Pauline's eyes, they go up in the little corner. She, she looks like she's in deep thought. And then she said, um, she said, I, I can't think of any right now. Wow. Everybody in the room was in complete silence. I, I mean, if you were in the room, you literally got goosebumps. And, and let me tell you, if you were feeling sorry for yourself regarding anything, Whatever you were feeling, whatever you thought you were going through at that moment, that was like a reality check. We're saying this woman who has no arms, no legs, who we're looking at right now is saying that she can't think of what her biggest challenges are. And we watched that was not a scripted response. We watched her body mannerisms that she does not see her disability because she's been acting as if she could have a regular life in spite of the fact that she has no arms and no legs. She's been acting as if she could carry out the roles of a mother, which she has, even though she has no arms and no legs. She's been acting as if she can find a way to still be able to cook and clean and carry out her duties as a wife, even though she has no arms and no legs, and she has. She can act as if she she has the ability to go ahead and type faster than somebody who has two hands and she does by using a stick in her mouth. Why? Because she's acted as if. Regardless of the circumstances, that regardless of the fact that she has no arms and no legs, that she says, I'm, I'm going to act as if I can go through this thing called life and I'm going to do this in my kind of normal. I'm going to act as if that I, I don't need anybody to have pity on me because I'm going to focus on the things that are positive and the things that I'm grateful for, as opposed to focusing on the fact that I have no arms and no legs. God made me this way. I can't change it. I'm going to act as if that I'm blessed and I'm grateful for the fact that, that every day I get to wake up and see the world. I, I, I just gonna, I'm going to act as if that it is a blessing to be like this because it allows me to be able to pour and make an impact in people's lives. That I'm going to act as if that even though I have this disability that I can use my voice and, and touch and influence lives. And when you act as if you start embodying that, your posture changes. All of a sudden now you start living from that place. All of a sudden now you start thinking different thoughts. All of a sudden now you start entering the room differently. All of a sudden things start shifting for you because you're acting as if the circumstances don't define you. And so if you're a note taker, I want you to pull out your pen and your paper. And so you might be asking the question, how do, how do I act as if? What do I do? What does that look like? And so I, I just want to give you a couple of things to just consider. You see, when, when you act as if, the first thing that you have to do is you have to come to the realization that number one, your circumstances, the things that you've produced thus far, that it does not define you. That, that, that yes, maybe perhaps you've been let go from your job. That is an event that does not define you. That maybe perhaps someone has abandoned you. They've rejected you. They stopped loving you. That was an event that does not define who you are. That, that maybe right now you've been working on this goal and this dream. You haven't produced the results. Those are the results that does not define you. 
that that once you make the decision that you're going to act as if first that has to register that has to click that's what needed to click for gustavo when he was in that place where he was with his daughter didn't know how he was going to feed her and was struggling went from making five figures to now figuring out how he's going to keep the lights on staying at the barnes and nobles and waiting until they close the doors to go home take a cold shower in the dark he said these are the circumstances but i'm going to act as if i'm greater than those circumstances i'm going to act as if that i am this businessman that i know that i can be which means that i've got to still go out and network even though i have nothing to really share right now because of the mere fact that i'm not employed i don't have the income but i'm going to act as if i'm going to start pouring and pouring into myself and picking up the books and tapes to read even though because those don't cost me anything they're sitting on my shelf i'm going to act as if and switch my mindset and start focusing on the things that i'm grateful for as opposed to the other things which leads me to the second point that when you start acting as if not only do you register and you say to yourself that number one that that these circumstances that they don't define me that the second thing is that you've got to be mindful of what it is that you're focusing on when you act as if you focus on where you're going not where you've been when you act as if you focus on what you want and not on what you don't want when you act as if you focus on what you're looking to create as opposed to all the things you've lost that's what you do when you act as if. And so it reminds me of, of the words of Les Brown when he says, whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. When you're acting as if that, that there's, there's no use, there's no point in focusing on all the things that are going wrong right now. There's no need to focus on all the things that you don't want in your life. Why would you focus on those things? They are what they are. Let's focus on what we're looking to create. Let's focus on how we're gonna turn this situation around. Let's focus on who we need to be right now in order to attract the things that we want. Let's act as if and let's focus right now on how we need to show up in order to produce some different results. Whatever we've been doing before obviously is not working and now we're gonna create a shift. We're gonna shift on how we're showing up. We're gonna shift on how we're looking at things and it's all gonna start off on what we're focusing on. And so we're gonna act as if. And then finally, this is the one that I need, I need you to get this. When you begin to act as if, you become very clear on what it is that you're looking to produce. And once you become very clear on what it is that you need, that you're looking to produce, the next thing you need to become very clear on is who's the person that you need to be in order to produce those type of results. And so you're saying to yourself that I am very clear on the fact that my marriage is struggling and that I know that I need to become a better husband and a better father. And now that I'm clear on that, what does a better husband and a better father do? A better husband and better father, he's a provider. A better husband and a better father, he's a listener. A better husband and a better father spends time with the children. A better husband and a better father is considerate, is, is unselfish. So now that I understand what it is that I want, I begin to embody that. I say to myself that I want to become this this businessman or this businesswoman, a good businessman or a good businesswoman does what? They take the time every day. They invest in themselves. They take the time. They strategize. They, they write down goals. They take action. They, they, they take master steps. You embody that person and then you act from that place. And yes, maybe perhaps the circumstances, the environment is not in alignment and it's not agreeing with who you are right now. But once you begin to embody, 
embody that new person. Once you begin to act as if, once you begin to act from that place and work from that place, all of a sudden now you start looking at the circumstances a little differently. All of a sudden now you start attracting opportunities. All of a sudden now the circumstances, the environment, the results, things begin to shift. Why? Because you're acting as if you have embodied that person you need to be and you're working from that place. And you need to get that. I've watched interview after interview of people who've produced extraordinary results. And sometimes they they explain this a little more complicated. But what they often say is, I saw myself, I, 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 I was already that best-selling author, even when no one knew my book, even when I hadn't even finished writing that book. I was already that world-renowned motivational speaker, even before I stepped foot on the first stage. I, I, I was this extraordinary business person. I, I, I made my mark in this business even before I first even opened up my business because that was me. It was already in my mind. It was just a matter of me now doing the work. It was the matter of me now showing up. It was the matter of me now taking advantage of the opportunities. It was a matter of me now acting as if it was already done. And so I want you to look at your life. I want you to think about the things that you're looking to produce and all the areas in your life that, that that's not in alignment. It's, it's not in agreement. It's not in congruence. It's, it's, it's not making sense. It's not adding up what you have in your mind and what you've produced. And, and, and how do you, respond to that how what's the bridge what takes you from from where you are to where you want to be what takes you and changes this environment that you're in right now and creating what you want what you've got to do is you've got to act as if and notice in that phrase is the word act you've got to you've got to work you've got to put in the time the effort you have to embody this person that you're looking to become and then move and walk from that place act as if This has been Andy Henriquez reminding you to always show up for your life. Because if you don't, if you don't, ladies and gentlemen, no one else will.